Think Estate in Leeds. That was my house, the one on the far right, which was with my mum, with my three sisters, and my father. My father plays a big part in this presentation um, because that relationship with my father has been very interesting and, um, well, for reason that will become apparent. The reason that is important is because back then he was a very violent man and we suffered, we all suffered, me and my three sisters and my mum suffered at the hands of my father. The social services described him as a feckless ogre in the file that they kept on us as a family. We were on the at-risk register with 126 visits by the social workers by the time I was five. That picture of me and my three sisters appeared in the national newspapers. That's how my mum's family up in Scotland discovered what happened that night. And that is that their sister or our mum that night had been murdered. There's simply no easy way of saying that. She was murdered. She was, she was found on the field at the back of the house. We'd walked yards from where she lay. If it had been summer, we would have seen my mum laid on that field. We were 20 yards from where she lay, but we were spared that sight. If I'd have seen my mum, I don't think I would have been alive today. She'd been stabbed 14 times. She'd also been twice over the head with a hammer. We were later discovered by that man that many of us, or most of us in this room will recognise the name, Peter Sutcliffe, or, or the Yorkshire Ripper, a serial killer that murdered 13 women in the north of England, and my mum, Wilma McCann, was the first of 13 women to die. And I just wondered what you knew about your father's upbringing that might shed some light on why he behaved the way he did, and then by extension um, to Peter Sutcliffe. My father... I am aware that most of, well, I'll say most, not all, but most of my dad's uh, siblings are very similar to him. I mean, he's, he is the extreme, I have to say, but they've all been quite violent. And my dad did tell us, although his self sister, maybe in his defense, denies this, but he did say to us that his father was extremely violent, would punish him in ways like he would have him stood up in a the corner of the living room for the whole evening and on about until the morning, overnight, stood up and if he came down and caught him asleep on the floor, we'd kick him up again. He was an extremely violent person. And that's got to have had some bearing on my father's behavior. There's a book down here by Dr. James Gilligan called Violence and he's interviewed, he's an American psychologist who's interviewed some of the most violent men in America, and his theory and thesis is that it's all based on shame, that, that very violent people have been deeply shamed and have no real sense of self as a result. Um, so I was just thinking of that when you were talking about your father. On the 19th of December 2007, I got a phone call that was to change, well, my life as I knew it. And it was from my younger sister, Angela, who had found Sonia, my beloved sister, uh, dead. She'd taken her life, she'd hung herself, and she called me. She didn't tell me what had happened, but I knew in the few words that she did share, which was, you better come now to Sonia's. And I, that, that drive, that half an hour through the rush hour traffic, on the 19th of December is a day I'll never forget, uh, in tears. And anyway, I then had the responsibility to go tell my father that his first child had killed herself. And at this point, I'm a father myself with a child, a daughter, and I had to break the news to my dad that this had happened and to see him crumble, see the pain in his face and to understand what he must be experiencing I actually turned around to my father and said uh, please forgive me those were my words for writing the book and causing the embarrassment and the pain and that's what I said and I, I forgave him in an instant and all that anger and that pretending to forgive all that just left me and it was a weight off my shoulders so since that happened in 2007 I had seven years with my father. Um, still not the relationship I would like it to have been, but it was a relationship, and I accepted my dad was a human being capable of making mistakes. If we come to Peter Sutcliffe, you didn't talk too much about your feelings towards the killer of your mother. <laughs> I remember when you first started talking for the Forgiveness Project, you would certainly talk about not hating him, 
not, and you wouldn't talk, when you spoke about it, it wasn't with rage, but there was a kind of disconnect. And I remember quite a lot of the prisoners were either inspired or incensed by your attitude. They couldn't, many couldn't understand it. And I know over the years, your feelings towards Peter Sutcliffe have changed, haven't they? And I wondered if you could share why that is and how. I guess I did have a disconnect. And, and I think that was about a, a coping mechanism and almost trying to kind of more disconnect and not feel the pain that would be associated with him doing taking my mum from me. In the process of working alongside some of the other uh, speakers for the Forgiveness Project and hearing and watching videos like this and hearing some of the incredible stories, I've been on this journey of wondering, should I be really forgiving him? Is that what my, would, my mum would want? Until I went, I attended the first annual lecture and, and on my own, I went on my own as well um, in 2010. Forgiveness Project. The Forgiveness annual Project, lecture. annual lecture, sorry. <laughs> yeah, let's get that right. Um, which was, um, which included Archbishop Desmond Tutu speaking about forgiveness in a way that, well, actually I didn't, I, w I was going to say, spoke to me. It, it's the final few sentences, and I'm not going to get them word for word right, but this, these are the words that I heard. He said, you can't force a person to forgive another. But when it occurs, it has the capacity to change a situation. Those words spoke to me right in there. And I realized for 40 years, or for 36 years at the time, I'd had all these thoughts. I'd want, I wanted him revenge. My sister was going to be befriend him and kill him and stick him. All, all, sort, all that left me. Just left me in the same way that it left me when I forgave my father. And, 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 and I guess in some ways, I, I, I dis get dis completely disconnected from, not from him, because I'm always going to be connected to him. I disconnected from that, that, that n any negative feelings towards I haven't got any negative feelings whatsoever for him, no whatsoever. If anything, and I don't speak about this publicly, if anything, I have some sympathy for him. I do believe that Peter, he has got a name, is aware that I've forgiven him, but having, much of what I say now, having met his doctor, um, he's, not, he's not capable of understanding what my forgiving him might even mean to him. And that was really interesting to hear that from his, his ex-doctor, should I say. Do you ever feel that you can move beyond your stories? So like, because obviously you're a family man, you've got a wife, children. I mean, was there, is there any opportunity where you'd be able to just be Richard and not to kind of live this story all the time? I've spoke about forgiveness to my children, about him and, and no one knows that, but I have just been reminded of that. Um, so, and that's Richard doing that, but that's, I mean, that's amazing anyway. I'm teaching my children about forgiveness. That's, in, that's interesting, isn't it, <laughs> that link? Um, so I, I don't think I'll ever truly get away from, it's who I am, it's, it's part of, a large part of who I am, but there are some occasions uh, that I'm just Richard, when I'm walking down the street, uh, when I'm talking to somebody at an event, they don't even know I'm the speaker, and, and so I'm just Richard. So yeah, there are occasions. I think the whole world needs forgiveness. The whole globe, the whole planet needs forgiveness because it would change everything. That's kind of a bold statement, um, and I hope I have to play some part in that, um, in, in, in sharing what is an extreme case of forgiveness. Well, there's lots of extreme cases of forgiveness, um, which is why I hope this keeps doing the fantastic work that it does.